Today I'm going to have a look at the performance difference between the flagship GTX 285 versus two GTX 260s in SLI, which I've got one of here. Now, I can already hear you ask, but David, is it 2009 already? And snarky comment aside, I can't afford an RTX graphics card, so I decided to do a video about something more interesting. So let's just pretend it's 2009. Uh, I don't feel very well. I wonder what's wrong with me. Let's, let's see. Oh. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a video on an Alienware ALX gaming PC from about 2009, which had the two GTX 260s in it. Here's the second one, hello. Even though the ad specifically stated that it had two GTX 280s in it, so I was pretty infuriated when it came with the measly baby 260s in it. You can have a look at the video down below if you want to check it out. I really enjoyed making that. So then I jumped at the opportunity to buy a GTX 285 for less than $5, which is about $500,000 less than the equivalent of today's high-end graphics cards. Now before we have a look at the benchmarks, I just want to do a quick breakdown of the system specs of the Alienware machine. Now it has an i7-920 in it, which is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, which is clocked to 2.66 GHz. I didn't overclock it any further because there was kind of stability issues with the motherboard, so I just kind of left it at stock. And then it's got 16 gigs of RAM in it in triple channel, I think there are 6 sticks and then it's got mechanical hard drives in it. And then obviously, because it's an Alienware machine, you're gonna have to take into account the fact that it's gonna have the 10% Alienware boost in performance. Mm. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this video, which is the performance of two smaller SLI graphics cards versus one big one back in 2009, or in 2018, just with legacy drivers. Now this is something that's fairly difficult to test, because in some situations they might have the same average frame rate, but that average frame rate might not accurately reflect a lot of micro stutter that SLI often introduces into games. Now micro stutter is the jerk and slowdowns in frame rate that you have in badly optimized games like Player Unknown Battlegrounds. So that's why I decided to go with something called frame time graphs, but these are a little bit more difficult to interpret, so I'll try and talk you through them as well as I can. Now let's have a look at these graphs. Now before I go any further, I just want to apologize for how janky they are. I had to make them in Excel and I've never used Excel before. I'm incompetent and get frustrated easily, so this is the best I could do. Now the orange is the GTX 285 and the blue is the two GTX 260s in SLI. And this gray line here is very important because that's the 60 frames per second threshold. So anything below that is running over 60 frames per second and everything above that is dips below 60 frames per second. So the higher the spikes are, the bigger the frame drop is. And as you can see here, weirdly, the GTX 285 actually doesn't do very well because it's got much bigger spikes and they're more regular than the two GTX 260s. But the thing is, this was both matches that I played online, so this might be due to network issues more than it is the actual game. And that's why I think we should head over to Crisis. And Crisis was a struggle. Both of these setups really struggled with it. As you can see, it's only the GTX 285 that goes below the 60 frames per second line. Uh, the GTX 260s really struggle, and they have some quite big frame drops, as you can see. So here, you can definitely see that there's more latency with the SLI setup as opposed to the single GTX 285, and it has just generally had higher frame rates. Uh, when we go over to Half-Life 2, a game which both setups ran very well, you can see that the orange is the GTX 285, which performed a little bit better, and it didn't have 
any of these huge frame spikes which the GTX 260s had. But, as you can see, they're all way below the 60 frames per second threshold, and the game was running at like 120 frames per second anyway, but you could really feel the micro stutter in this title, and I think one of the reasons that it's so obvious is because of the higher frame rate. And now, when moving over to the final game that I tested, which was Fear 2, you'll see that the orange, being the GTX 285, was more consistently below the 60 frames per second line, which is very good. Uh, but you can see that both of the graphics card setups have these huge spikes every now and then and these spikes are actually when the game saves at checkpoints. So it does result in stutter but it's not during a gunfight and it's not because of badly optimized graphics card engine stuff, it's just because of the game saving. Now after having looked at the frame time graphs, I think it's quite clear that Nvidia had quite a good strategy when it came to higher end gaming performance back in 2009. Because you know, if you had more money to spend on a graphics card, you could just buy a 285 instead of something like a GTX 260. Now obviously you could run three 285s in SLI if you were really crazy, but that's not something that the average consumer would do. Now if you look at what AMD did back then with their graphics cards, is the fastest graphics card they had was the HD 4870, which was fairly quick, but it couldn't compete at all with the GTX 285, but it was also cheaper. So their idea was if you wanted higher performance, you could just buy two HD 4870s. And they even brought out single board dual GPU versions of the graphics cards. There was an HD 4850X2, which was supposed to be their high-end graphics card. Now, this kind of makes sense from a theoretical perspective, but as you see with the tests in this video, the problem with that is you might get similar average frame rates, but the games do feel worse to play, because a single powerful GPU is always going to be more stable and have lower frame latencies and things like that, which just makes it more pleasant to use. And that brings me to the end of another fairly pointless video here on the channel. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more fairly pointless videos. Let me know how you feel about the frame time graphs. I really like them and the fact that they're gaining popularity makes me happy. Uh, but do let me know if you want more of an explanation around how they work and what the information means and all of that good stuff. And if you want content on the RTX graphics cards, go somewhere else because I can't help you with that because I don't have $3 million lying around. Anyway, until the next video, bye-bye.